Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel today. I thought I'd do an opinionated video, which I know you you guys and girls love. And the, the topic will be who I think should think about changing AFL clubs. Now, I'm not taking into account their contracts or anything like that. Plus people say contracts mean nothing these days. But I'm going to give my opinion on every single club, players at your clubs, that I feel that should think about changing clubs. First off, please subscribe to the video, uh, to the chat. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're just a past 2150 subs, so please keep on smashing that sub button on the road to 3K, hopefully before the end of the year. Hopefully we can keep expanding that growth massively. The quicker we get there, the better, because there will be something good once we hit 3K. Now, also, please like this video if you haven't already. We're going to aim for 20 likes for this video. It's not that hard. If you're watching this video, smash that like button. would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you like me, if you like my stuff, smash the like button. would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Now that that's been said, let's now go to who I think, who should think about changing AFL clubs. Now I'm going to change things up. I'm not going in alphabetical order like I generally start with the Crows and then with the Bulldogs. I'm doing it in the latter order. Some clubs are named one player. Some clubs are named a couple. Some clubs are named three. So first off, Collingwood. Two players at the Pies that I feel that should be looking at changing clubs are Finlay McRae and Trent Bianco. Now, two young guys who are midfielders, especially McRae. I feel that they should be changing clubs purely because, look at the Pies midfield right now. That's not changing anytime soon. Mitch, Tom Mitchell, Nick and Josh Dacos. Tagawi, side bottom, Penbury. Penbury's playing half back now anyway, and side bottom's on the wing and, the, and playing forward. So that midfield, though, that crop of midfield that they're playing right now is basically going to be unchanged for years to come. So I don't see a spot for Trent Bianco or Finlay McRae in the 22, let alone the midfield. So I feel they should take a chance while they're younger. They're both going pretty solid in the twos. Finlay, Finlay McRae in particular is going really well in the two. So they should just look at think about changing clubs. I think it would be a good move for those two young fellas. What do you got? Pies fans, what do you think? Finlay McRae, Trent Bianco, should they be thinking about changing clubs? Under this question that you can see right here on the screen, who do you think should be thinking about changing clubs? And the contract is irrelevant for this topic. The question is contract or no contract, who you feel from your club that should be looking elsewhere? And Trent Bianco and Finlay McRae, for the reasons I just outlined for me, are the ones. They should be looking elsewhere. Also, we'll now move on to the Brisbane Lions. I've named four players here, two in each category. The first category for the Lions, for the two, is Devin Robinson and Jared Lyons. Two guys at the different age bracket, both inside mids. They're both not versatile to play forward or halfback or anything like that. Two inside mids. They're not getting past Dunkley, Ashcroft, Neil, Zorko while he's still there. McCluggy, Jim Berry on the wings. Like, there's no spot for them. There's other players I'm forgetting. Jasper Fletcher, young drafter, will probably pass these two soon as well. So I feel that they need to take capitalise. Jared Lyons had great form last year before, we went before the final series and then get play in the final series. And he's got hasn't been really seen since he was a sub one game this year. Devin Robertson, very similar, played maybe one AFL game this year, maybe two at best. He, regardless of the fact, they both need to look elsewhere. Um, Jared Lyons might not get a contract offer this year. I think he's more than serviceable to play at a, at a lower ranked team or to come play for an Essendon or someone like that who say they want inside mids. And these are two different age brackets. Dev Robertson's very young and Cheryl Lyons is very experienced and around 30 years of age. They're the, the midfield brigade of Brisbane, I feel, that should be looking elsewhere. The two ruck forward brigades, Tom Fullerton and Darcy Fort. Tom Fullerton's younger. He's got age on his side where Darcy Fort's around 30. But Darcy Fort's been terrific. Darcy, ter Darcy Fort has been more terrific at Brisbane than what he has at Geelong. He's had more opportunities at Brisbane when Danaher and Hipwood had ACL injuries, or Hipwood did. And both players were injured, but now he's gone down the pecking order. McInerney's playing now, so Darcy Ford's really getting in. And when he plays, he does very well, but it gets basically dropped for one of those guys if they're missing automatically. And Tom Fullerton's played a game or two here and there as well. 
is better than playing in the twos. Um, and he should be one with his age on his side. That factor on his side is the advantage of his age on his side. So he should be looking elsewhere as well. Brisbane fans, what do you think of those four players? Devin Robson, Jared Lyons, Darcy Fortin, Tom Fullerton. Paul Adelaide next. Got two players here, both on either side of the ground. The defender side of things, Tom Clory was a regular. He was in their leadership group. Fallen out of favour now. You've got Darcy Burn jones who was playing ahead of him. Now he's playing up forward, and he still can't get in, Tom Clory. Trent McKenzie, the cannon. Ali Aurelia. Um, what other plays? Dan Houston, et cetera. Dylan Williams, young player, has been pushed ahead of him. medium size defender. Tom Clory can play as a key defender, but can also play as a medium size defender. If need be. He's even played on Charlie Cameron and likes on the smalls before. I feel he's someone that needs to look elsewhere more than serviceable, an experienced defender. Played a lot of games. Got the age factor as well. He's more than capable. I would have been happy. St. Gilda went for him a couple of years ago, as I mentioned on my podcast when I first started it. Um, and even now, I would still take Tom Clory. From the forward side of things, this one's been more publicly known. Mitch Georgiades. Unfortunately, on his ACL about three weeks ago. So wish him all the best, Mitchie. Um, Western Australian. West Coast is right there for the taking. They need those type of players. And Mitch Georgiades would fit that build. Behind Todd Marshall, Dixon, while he's still there. Ollie Lord seemed to pass him before he done his ACL. Um, and Darcy Bird Jones is playing forward as well. So, and Brian Teagle's played as well. So, I think Mitch George had his best that he looks for another club. And West Coast will be the red hot favourite for him. You would think if he goes back home to Perth, as Freya have a bunch of key forwards already. Now, we'll move on to Melbourne Football Club. Two guys in different positions. And inside mid, first I'll go with is James Harms. Well, Oliver Petrarca. Viney, Brayshaw, James Jordan's getting games ahead of him as a sub role as well. Um, yeah, I think he needs to look elsewhere. It's pretty self evident. He went try to get Essendon, didn't work. Did the stay, probably it didn't work. And then this year he's not getting the game again. He's been pl- sucking the twos lately. Um, and if he plays the games, very rare now. So he should be doing the lookings elsewhere. Then this one may be a little bit debatable for Melbourne fans, and it's Ben Brown. Now I feel that Van Royen is ahead of him, clearly. Um, we got the two rucks playing. One of them plays for Granny Gorn. So you've got Van Royen, the resting ruckman. Um, they played Tom McDonald. I don't know why. Um, he's not that good, let's be honest. And Van Brown seemed to have fallen out of favour now. Since he had that one-week injury, he's been stuck in the two since. I feel it might sound coincidental, but could North Melbourne have a play at him? X Roo from a couple of years ago. They need more support for Larky. It just wouldn't shock me if Ben Brown is shopping himself around at the end of the home and away season, especially if he doesn't get back in the team anytime soon and significantly get in the team. Not just one game here and there, but a consistent form of games again. He doesn't get that. Wouldn't be shocked if he's another one that looks elsewhere. Ben Brown, James Harms, Demon fans, comment down below. The Saints, for me, my saying is it's the Toms. Tom Campbell, the Ruckman, Ruckman. Highly underrated. I've said it for months. He is the best Ruckman not getting an AFL game right now. Better than any other team's backup Ruckman is Tom Campbell. Absolutely underrated. He's not going to get in. Seems St. Kilda won't play two Ruckman. If they do, it'll be when Jack Hayes comes back later in the year. Um, they've been playing Mitch Owens as a backup Ruckman, which has done pretty well. So, I know, unfortunately, I don't see my mate Tommy Campbell getting a game. He should be getting a game. But he's someone I would look at. Um, getting another go, a club that needs Ruckman. Look at clubs like Sydney. Look at clubs like the Giants who haven't got a recognised Ruckman. You've got Flynn, Briggs, Young Nick Madden. I know they had a lot of Ruck options, but then options aren't great. So, and Flynn. So, it's a club that needs Carlton, for example. They just signed Mark Pitnett to a four-year deal today, which is unbelievable. It really is. It shows Tom DeConing's going, and we'll get to Carlton soon. Um, Carlton Needle Ruckman, Tom Campbell could be more than serviceable. Number one at Carlton over Pitnett. I don't care that he just got four years and to Koenig's leaving, we know. So, I mean, Tom Campbell should get a go there. Now, the other Tom down in defence, Tom Highmore. When he was recruited from New South Wales, great signing was Tommy Highmore. Um, it was worth the selection we picked him with. And then he seemed to not get picked this year at all. And last year, late last year, 
great intercept defender, good ball user, gets a lot of the ball as well, gets about 20 touches a game. He should be someone um, they should be looking at. Um, clubs that need intercept defenders and medium-sized defenders, there's a lot of clubs that are crying out for key defenders. Um, that, so that'd be someone I'd be looking out for, absolutely. If you need an intercept defender, Tommy Highmore is your man. Now, when we're on to the Bulldogs, I've gone four players, two key position players and a midfielder, mid four, or more forward. First, I'll go with the forward mid, Toby McLean. Beveridge doesn't like him. It's been self-evident. He was subbed out in his 100th game. I mean, we know Beveridge doesn't like him. And he had him as a sub one game, and he was the only pl- club this year to not bring on their sub. Beveridge doesn't like Toby McLean. It's self-evident. He came back from an ACL injury. Um, it was great to see him get a game back. I think Beveridge picked him for that reason alone because he was coming back from the injury to give him a moment. Then he was shipped off to the twos not long after. So uh, Toby McLean should look elsewhere. He's more than capable of playing AFL still. Um, again, the clubs like North Melbourne or Hawthorne and any of those experienced players, Toby McLean could fit in perfectly there. The other players at the Bulldogs I've gone with is my man Joshy Bruce. Going to fall out of favour when he comes back from his rib injury. You've got Jamara, Norton, Sam Darcy when he's back from injury. The yeah, recruit James O'Donnell seems to be passing everyone in that position now. You got Liam Jones there, who I don't think that's good that good, by the way, but he's there. Ryan Garner's there, I don't think he's that good. Alex Keith is there, he's not that good, should retire. Um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they're gonna fit Josh Bruce back in. So you should look elsewhere. And another tall guy, a younger guy, Buku Kamas. Or someone that lighted it up a little bit last year and been nowhere to be seen. He's not been injured. He's been stuck in the twos. Having some solid games, some bad games, but not getting a game. Um, I think he should look elsewhere as well. Bulldogs fans, what do you think? Comment down below. Geelong, I've just gone the one play. I've got Brandon Parfit. We know about the final series where he was dropped. Um, didn't get the sub. It was the sub and the granny. Um, he had one game last year where he had like 26 disposals and a goal and got dropped. So if that doesn't show you that he's out of favour, I don't know what is. Um, he should look elsewhere. He, he get a game somewhere else. Again, throw up in North Melbourne and Essendon and Hawthorne. The Eagles are definitely playing, so uh, Brenna Parfitt still has some football to um, offer. So Geelong fans, what do you think? Is Parfitt the one that should be looking for other clubs? Crows have just gone a single player as well as Matt Crouch. Schoenberg, even when he's not in the team, the he was behind him. Met the several ones this year. Um, did all right and then was dropped and not to be seen again uh, recently. So you got you got Laird, Dawson. Barry, who hasn't been in much this year, who's ahead of Crouch as well. So, and then the guys that are regularly in there. So, he'll just have to look elsewhere. Um, or Matt Crouch could join his brother at the Saints, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Now, Essendon, I've gone three plays of the Bombers. I've gone, now, this one may be controversial. Nick Cox, 21 years of age. I know he's been injury prone the last year and a bit, or well, not even a year, um, but around that time frame. I feel he needs a new start. I just feel that Essendon are going to move past him. I really do. You got, you got, um, Wiedemann, Peter Wright. What, what position is he going to play too, Nichols? He's going to play a key forward. He's going to play as a key defender. He's going to play as a key defender. He might get a role in there. But you got Ridley and Laverde there. They like. Um, now they're playing Kane Ball when he was playing as a forward as a defender. Where does Nick Cox fit into this? Sam Zach Reed as well when he comes back from injury. That's another guy you can add to this list. Just think about changing clubs as well. Um, this next one is a young key forward, Patrick Voss. Oh, he's been dominating the two, especially in the first six games of the season in the VFL. Hasn't been given a go. They've played Andrew Phillips to back up Ruckman as a forward more than giving Patrick Voss a go, who's kicking bags in the twos in the start of the season. I feel he, if he doesn't get delisted, should look another club. Now, this one also may be controversial from the Bombers. It's the former skipper in Dawson Heppel. It's well documented. I talked about it on my podcast. The week he was abused by his own fans um, against us at the Saints. I heard a lot of vile shit they said about Dyson Heppel, and some I won't repeat on here, but basically telling him to dig a hole in the ground, like, pathetic. Dyson Heppel done a lot of work for this club. was the captain, stayed through the drug saga, and that's how they repay him. If I was Dyson Heppel, I would have taken that goal as offer last, for last year, for this season coming. But he stayed, 
It's true to his word. Dyson Apple stuck to the Bombers. Took a while to make that decision. But I feel he should now just leave um, before they throw him out. And I think he could get a game and play like a Luke Hodge, uh, John Lewis type role at a North Melbourne or, or even a Bomb, uh, Hawthorne. So, or Eagles even. So we'll have to wait and see there. Bombers fans, what do you think? Comment down below. Fremantle. I've gone a key defender, a medium-sized forward, and a key forward. Sam Sturt, the medium-sized forward, out of favour. Not a big possession getter, which probably doesn't help him. But I just think he needs, needs a new start, and he's not in John Longmire's, uh, Justin Longmuir's plans at all. Uh, he got one game this year, I think, or two. That's it. Matt Tabernay, injury-prone. I think a fresh start is needed for him. Try and miss. People like Josh Tracy at Fremantle. Uh, Luke Jackson's there. Uh, Walters will still be there for a little bit. Schultz, Switzkowski. I just think the mix, they like that mix. And Martin Frederick as well. So I think Matt Tabernard, I think it could be good for both parties if he looked elsewhere. I still think he's serviceable. Some free friends I talked to say so they don't think he's any good. I don't agree with that at all. But I feel he should um, have a new change of scenery for Matt Tabernard. That, same for Joel Hamling as well, a key defender. Was a premiership player of the Bulldogs. Freya picked him up to play regularly, but they got Pierce, Cox, Ryan, Young, Chapman, Walker. He just doesn't fit in that. And there's more. I'm forgetting Pierce, Brennan Cox, Luke Ryan, Hayden Young, Heath Chapman, Brandon Walker, and there's others as well. So Nathan Wilson even. So I think Joel Hamling should be looking else. He's been stuck in the waffle all year. Uh, yeah, free reference, let me know down below. Carlton, I've got three players. Paddy Dow, first, simple. I get a game, stick in over 30 touches. If we get some, some games with 40, I get a game midfielder. A club like Essendon and could look at him, even the North West Coast or Hawthorne. Uh, other guys, so well publicized. Tom DeConing, he's going. Change the club will be good for him. Falling behind the Silvanis, the Kernos, the Mackays. I think the Silvani is second, maybe. Uh, Pitnet. I mean, they've got Harry Leamy, young draftee, who's a key forward ruck. I think he should just move on. I really think he should. And Saints and Geelong and Sydney are three clubs very, very keen on him. And this one may be a bit controversial for the diehard Carlton fans who love the father sons. It's Jack Silvani. I feel Jack Silvani shouldn't leave the Carlton Football Club. I feel that Jack getting disrespected like Keppel is at Essendon. Um, I don't know why. He's a solid player. Getting disrespected. And in terms of positioning, flipping him in the backup ruck role. Some weeks he wasn't playing. I just think Jack needs to change the scenery. And a club, those bottom clubs will clearly do with him, but I see a St Kilda type. His dad's now the list manager at the Saints. So could Soss, young Soss fit in at Saints? A Silvani reunion at the Saints. How do you think that would feel, Saints fans? Um, joined with Membry, King, Owens. That would be, be a pretty good mix. Membry and Owens are versatile as well in terms of moving up the ground. What do you guys think of that move, if that was to happen or could happen? If, I wouldn't mind it. I really wouldn't. I rate Jack Silvani more than people think. Um, but yeah, Carlton fans, what do you think? Could he go to a Geelong when Hawkins is going to be retiring soon to have that third tour with uh, Cameron? Just another option that Jack Savani will have plenty of suitors if he was to explore the market. The Swans are on two plays. A key defender, Lewis Malikin, has some injuries lately, but he's been stuck in the twos the last three weeks, coming back from injury, and can't get a game still with the depleted injury back on the Carlton's rampy. And I had Callum Mills playing as a key defender against Geelong in Geelong not too long ago. I feel Lewis Malikin needs to change the scenery. I was looking to go out last year, but he was contracted and Sydney wouldn't let him go. And they're not even playing him now when he's available now. And another one, Sam Wicks. Small forward, had some injuries. Been beating the twos the last three weeks as well, like Malikin. So not seem to get a game. I feel Sam Wicks could offer some good forward pressure at clubs looking for small forwards, like a North Melbourne. Uh the Skulko Suns, I've gone Chris Burgess and Charlie Constable. Well, Chris Burgess, a swing man, played as a back of rock, key defender, key forward, won the JJ Liston Trophy in the VFL last year for the most goals. Oh, sorry, that's a – anyway, he won the goal-kicking award in the VFL last year. I mean, a great say. He's in that top three at the moment, um, even playing as a back of rock and as a defender at times. So still be leading the Coleman or up there in the VFL. Is uh, very good on his behalf. He should look at a club. Any club on a swing man, Chris Burgess is your man. And Charlie Constable, start of the season, played two good games and got dropped. His efficiency wasn't the greatest and turnover use. 
sucking the twos, Dewey Jew saying, oh, it, we need him to do a bit of this, this, and that, and this is what he needs to adjust to his role to get back in, yada, 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 and he's still doing well and not getting in. So I feel he should be on the way out for a club. that may need some depth in the midfield area so the Bombers can get a, an inside mid as well. Kemp, his size has changed. He's leaned down a little bit, though, Charlie Constable, lately. I've noticed. For the Tigers, it's Noah Cumberland. Well, I know Dim is gone now, but in and out, in and out. Better player than what he's showing, but also a better player. He should be treated better as well by Richmond. Now the half has gone, we'll see how Andrew McWalter takes things. But Noel Cumberland could get a game almost at the half, bottom half of the ladder or clubs that are looking at mean some forwards. Um, he could be one, and he's a deadly left foot kick as well. GWS, I've gone... Th- Jacob Riccardi, swingman at times, back at Ruckman. He's a good medium-sized forward. Plays at third tall. Uh, could do some pl- – clubs looking for key forwards and medium-sized forwards. He'd be one I'd be looking at. Lockie Keefe, to, over the age of 30, may reti- get delisted. But clubs that want key, experience key defender depth, Lewis Keefe, Lockie Keefe can provide that. He can also play as a key defender as well, uh, as a back at Ruckman and even up forward as well. So a bit of versatility there and experience for Lockie Keefe. And I put Phil Davis in this category, like Keith, injury pro now, then his calf in the wing against the Saint- Sandringham in the VFL, the Saints VFL. Uh, I don't think he'll play on it next year, but I'm just saying, if you put an offer to him, he may consider it. But I don't think so, but I just thought I'd throw his name in the conversation. The Hawks, I've gone Cooper Stevens. They just traded him in. I know it might sound controversial, but Ward, Josh Ward, Cam McKenzie, um, Carl Amon, Newcomb, Warpool, Will Day. There's no spot for him. He can only play as an inside mid. So I think he should be looking elsewhere. I don't think it was the right move for Hawthorne to bring him in to begin with. Um, so yeah, Cooper Stevens should be one fellow Cooper. Hello, Cooper. Uh, yeah, I think he should look elsewhere. North Melbourne, I've gone two players. Aaron Hall and Callan Dawson. Callan Dawson, an intercept defender, was in the mid-season draft last year. Played then, been out of favour since Noble got the sarsaparilla. So, and North. So I feel that he should really be looking elsewhere if there is options out there. Otherwise, he'll just have to stick as a depth player on North Melbourne's list. Kerno, um, Kerno, McCaw, Ben Mackay, um, Aidan Bond has been getting games ahead of him, a bit confusing. So, yeah, that's what they should do, North Melbourne, with him. And Aaron Hall, I don't know why people don't like Aaron Hall. Racks up possessions, a big kick, long kick. Yes, he's turned over the lot, but so there's a lot of players. Um, I think he could add some versatility. I know he's at North Melbourne, so you think, well, if you're not getting game of North, he's in trouble. But I feel clubs that need running halfbacks, he could provide good run and carry, and he can run, 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 and he can kick along. They're the top players some clubs need, some clubs that, that haven't got many halfbacks. Now, the final one I'm going to go through is the Eagles. I've got two players. I'm going to leave the most controversial of this entire video to the end. First, it's Josh Rotham. Key defender, been playing as a forward at times, back at Ruckman. He's a key defender, an intercept defender type player. So if anyone that needs those types as a depth option, Josh Rotham can do that. Now, the most controversial one in this video so far, or not so far, in this entire video, this will be this one. The Eagles, the player that I think that should be looking for change is Andrew Gaff. Great player, hadn't had a great season. Fallen out of favour, I think had they actually had not, all these injuries not happened, he may have been dropped. Um, hasn't played well, been out of position, hasn't, not playing pure wing anymore. He's playing a bit of inside mid. He is a wingman, Simo. I understand all the injuries in that. He has to be playing on a wing, and if he's not going to be playing that, he should be looking elsewhere. North Melbourne went into shuck seven years at him five years ago, however long ago it was. St Kilda were interested at the time. Hawthorne were interested at the time. Essendon were interested at the time. A club that needs a wingman, Andrew Gaffin, still provide that over the age of 30. But Gaff should be looking elsewhere and should get a three-year deal somewhere else. Thank you all for watching this video. Eagles fans, what do you think of that? North Melbourne fans, the recent one as well. Comment down below what your thoughts of the place that I think that should look at change of clubs, your clubs, all clubs. Comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you like these type of videos where to do these, let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the bell for all notifications and smash that like button. One over 20 likes for this video. Thank you all. Until the next video, take care. And, oh, recently we just had my 300th video on the channel. This is video 301. 
this, the videos will continue to be pumped out day after day after day. Thank you all. Till the next video, take care. Go Saints.